All right. Uh, we got uh, Luke 96 MX. How do I learn how to whip good to impress mm. girls? Oh, oh, good question. Uh, if you think you're ready to whip, then you're out of your damn mind. very obvious when you're doing it correct versus incorrect and in locking in those hips. And when you unlocks your hips, the beauty of that is that it allows your lower body to work freely without your upper body moving at all. What will the rear brake do if you guys had to guess from this point forward, what's the rear brake gonna do the bike? It's gonna stand it up and it's gonna make it ride up and out of that rut, which is gonna get really annoying really quickly. trying to stand up he's trying to get him to stand up the whole way through the rut not easy kind of challenging especially because these are hard these are like literally hard the ground is hard these are ruts from yesterday there was a race yesterday they didn't groom they left the ruts there which is good for practice but usually ruts have a little bit of a give to them these are like concrete so really challenging really hard but Lillian's doing pretty good As far as both feet on the pegs, it's very important that we are only weighting our outside foot peg. Although both feet are on the pegs, outside foot peg should be the only one driving weight down and into that foot peg. Inside foot should just be tight against the frame. that I see from beginners is approaching slow because they're afraid to commit. They don't know what speed to enter. Maybe the speed that is required feels too fast. So they go slower. And then when they get to the base of the takeoff or the top of the takeoff, they decide to give it that last second little bit of gas. That is what's going to kick you and make the bike react funny. today we had that discussion before we we got well when we got here before we got here as well as when we got here we had that discussion is she gonna try to hit the triple today we looked at the run up and it's it's pretty chewed out there's some pretty deep holes leading up to it and even AJ was like 
Yeah, if it's your first time, I probably wouldn't hit it today with it like that. I'm sorry guys, but it is a hot one. It's like 92 degrees and definitely takes a lot out of you walking around filming people ride dirt bikes. So I'm gonna sit here in the car with the AC on and uh, chill out for a little bit, cause uh, why not? We've been riding like dirt bikes for a good couple of years now. Obviously like the kids have progressed, they've gotten better, they've learned a lot and I've learned a lot. I thought about like, what would I do differently if I was starting now teaching my kids how to ride dirt bikes? What would I do different? How would I do it? And uh, I realized that basically I would have done a good job. <laughs> if I could go back in time, I would have done a much better job. See, okay, so when I first got bikes, the first thing I taught them how to do was how to jump. That's what I thought was important. Like I thought, I want my kids to learn how to jump. I want them to experience that because it's the best feeling in the world, right? Like I wanted them to experience the feeling of flying through the air. I wanted them to build confidence of what it's like to fly over gaps. And I guess I thought that was most important, but in my defense, like that's all we did back then. Like we had bicycles and I built jumps. I built jumps for the kids to hit on their bicycles. So naturally once we got dirt bikes, I wanted them to do the same thing, obviously, just faster and further and higher. What? So technically it's not really my fault, but after that, when we got uh, the kids a two-stroke, we got Luke a KX65. The next thing I wanted to teach them is I wanted them to feel power, right? I wanted him to feel what it's like to hit the power band on a two-stroke. And we went out to Riverdale where there was open space and I was like, just hit the throttle. I just want you to know what it's like. I just want you to know how the bike reacts. I want you to know what it feels like. So that way you're prepared for it when it happens and it doesn't surprise you, right? You're not gonna hit the gas and it's gonna surprise you. So that's the second thing that I taught my kids. And now seeing uh, coaches over here like AJ and also Moto Dads who probably have more training and riding experience than I did, they don't even worry about that. Like we're at a training, AJ has never really even talked about power band, hitting the power band. He hasn't talked about that at all. In fact, the first half an hour was all about body control. The first like 15 minutes were about your feet. He was talking about like boots, gripping the bike, where do your toes go? How do you feel with your feet? How you move the bike with your feet? Uh, squeezing the bike with your knees. That was most of what we talked about in the morning. And then he got into hips, putting your hips back, putting your head forward, elbows out. You can do it, put your back into it. And I've seen dads, kids that, that my kids ride with, I've seen other kids that have so much better body position than my kids. And they may not have been as fast as my kids in the beginning, but now they're just as fast or faster and they have better body control or body positioning. So uh, they're safer riders and they don't get sketchy as much. So I pass that on to you guys. If I could do anything differently, if I could start over, we would just work on body positioning, staying in the right technique, not building any bad habits, and then the speed would come later. Can you film? Oh, are you like, the filmer now? All right, AJ. What? I got. Okay, I have you a question for you first. You got questions for me? I got questions <clears> for you. So. What would you rate her performance today? One to ten. Uh, five. Could have tried harder. But. No. Uh, seven. We'll go seven. Tough. How would you rate your own performance? So about tired I am. I'd say like an eight. Okay. I thought you looked pretty good. Yeah. The track was very difficult. Yeah. All right. So what do you got for me? Here's the thing. People have called, like message me, ask me questions all the time. These are typical questions. I'm not an expert though, but I try to help people out. But I figure since you're here, let's see what, what you would say, right? Okay. okay, so this comes from Armadillo Gaddon. I'm gonna rephrase this question. He says, how do you know when you're ready to race? I discourage people from racing for extended periods of time <clears throat> because it makes you ride over your limit. Unless you're the most accountable, egoless person ever, when you get out for a race, you're gonna try to keep up with somebody that maybe you shouldn't keep up with if you do race you just have to know where to cap yourself so if that if right. like riding within your limit is at 50 percent speed stay at 50 percent speed if people are blown by you and that means that 50 percent speed gets you 35th place then it gets you 35th place that's what i did in supercross this year i had three weeks preseason. i just told myself like i can't ride over 70 percent, and that was that so if you can go into racing with that mentality then 
you're ready to race whenever. You just have to be smart about it. So That's you're 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 more worried about getting yourself to the next level than comparing yourself to others. Yeah. yeah, because you have to you have to not worry about the other people, which yeah. is very hard. So, so if you can show up to a race and just ride and race for yourself, right, then do it whenever. All right. Uh, Joshua Rid Ridgers okay. says, hey, I'm switching from a 150R four-stroke to an 85. Any tip? So basically, it's his first race bike. You're probably going to have to be a little bit more conscious of gear selection because maybe on that 150R, you could probably get away with leaving it slightly in the wrong gear. On an 85, you have to be pretty particular. So other than that, it should feel about the same. Less engine brake, so you're going to have to brake a little harder probably. And then just make sure you're in the right gear. Uh, we got uh, Luke 96 MX. How do I learn how to whip good to impress mm. girls? Oh, oh, good question. Uh, if you think you're ready to whip, then you're out of your damn mind. Quote from Albert. All right, fair enough. All right. Uh, last question from Hamish White. He says, "How sore People were your kahunas? On my how sore were your kahunas mm. after the Rebel Strip rhythm?" Uh, pretty sore. Pretty sore. Pretty sore. Nice. But Did not they as recover bad as yet? It, Are not they as, better now? Not as bad as it looked. It actually hurt <laughs> yeah. my shoulders more than anything because it yanked me so far away from the bike right. that it hurt my shoulders. Are you doing it again? Yeah. I just ordered yeah. a bike from Italy, so it should be in next week. I'll have Jet and Hunter test it maybe a little bit, and really? then, yeah, I'll do 125 class. Carson's doing 125 class, too. If you want Lillian, she can test it, too. You want to test it? You just have to make another Jet trip Hunter and Lillian. <laughs> awesome. Thanks very much, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Smash that like button and peace out.